Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nina Ahmed, and I'm really happy to be here, excited to share my vision for the Auditor General's office. Uh, in brief, I would be the first scientist uh, with a very progressive agenda to serve in an executive statewide office. And I will be delivering uh, evidence-based oversight as your Auditor General. I believe this office can be a very powerful tool for progressive change, and I'm running to deliver real results in the fight for equality, accountability, and transparency. You know, this COVID-19 um, pandemic, all of those issues we're, you know, st uh, staying in place, that is having a huge impact on people who uh, depend on their uh, wages, uh, everyday wages, they don't have savings. And so we must, in our preparedness plan, include an economic component as well. So that's a very proactive step I would like to take. But um, just in general, the Auditor uh, General's position is a leadership position. It manages and leads the approximately 300 plus employees that has come down from 800, as Tracy said. But it's very importantly manages political relationships across the state to bring strategic vision to Pennsylvania. So the uh, Auditor General's office have employees who are qualified and trained in the field of auditing and accounting. It's worth noting all Auditor Generals have been lawyers up to now, uh, except for Barbara Haker, who was a nurse. Um, and I bring some leadership and lived experience with financial and uh, audit matters. Uh, not only have I been trained as a scientist to understand the value of data and the power of analysis, as deputy mayor uh, in Philadelphia, I was part of a cabinet and we were tasked to look for efficiencies in our $4 billion operating budget. And that's what told me the budget is a moral document. And I want to bring that lived experience to this Auditor General's office, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, I also served as a commissioner on President Obama's Commission for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, and got to work with federal government up close, uh, looking at issues impacting uh, people like nail salon workers and uh, impacting um, disproportionate uh, deportation. All of this to say that how we use our dollars what the priorities are is something that I'm really clean, keenly interested in. I served um, for nine years on our local community trust, the largest one in Southeast Pennsylvania, that's the Philadelphia Foundation. I had two uh, financial uh, uh, responsibilities there. I was uh, the chair of the grant making committee. I'm sorry. Oops, okay. Um, and so to wrap it up, um, I just wanna make sure that I use this Auditor General's office to make sure we have public policy that actually impacts people and leaves no one behind. And I'll take questions. All right, we have a question in the chat here that is, uh, how do you feel about bills that try to lure in industries like HB 1100 or the Amazon bids, Manaka Cracker Plant, or, uh, and this was of course a big deal for us in Pittsburgh some years ago, sports stadiums. Yes, so first of all, I think our antitrust uh, measures have not been put into place in our country. That's a problem, which is why we have the Amazons of the world. I, uh, you know, our local economies are driven by our small uh, businesses and Amazon has devastated that. So that's a problem right there. And we would use data. This is where the Auditor General's office is really critical. We can supply the data to our legislators and the re legislators and the rest of the executive branch to say, hey, when you would do this, we can use actuarial uh, actuary, actuaries to game out what that data would look like if an Amazon would come in. Second thing, you know, you talked about the cracker plants. I'm a scientist and I deeply believe in saving our environment. And there's been a lot of conversation pre prior with the Congress people who are running for office. The transition has to be uh, very thoughtful. I actually propose before we do any of this, uh, we change our... Um, <laughs> Percentage of, what we, uh, percentage of what we choose to um, give to clean energy. It's set at 18% now. Uh, so, what I was saying was the alternative energy profile of Pennsylvania sets our clean energy 
percentage at 18. And I think that's really low, it, meaning 18% of our energy would come um, from clean sources by, for 2021. And that doesn't signal to uh, people who would invest in this sector uh, to say, um, you know, we're gonna come to the state. The other thing I want to, what I would propose is to have a set aside fund created for the transition of folks who are going from, um, with their skill set from fossil fuel to clean energy. You know, I looked at the alternative energy profile. They don't even have included uh, hydrogen cell fuel technology. We, in, in fact, in Pennsylvania have a plant not too far from me here in Montgomery County where they're making hydrogen cell fuel uh, tanks and those are safe. I drove in the car. Uh, the, all the material is sourced in Pennsylvania except People using it are Australia, they're importing it from us, Australia, Korea, uh, California, but not Pennsylvania. So we need to have political will. Somebody mentioned earlier, there needs to be political will to drive this issue. And the Auditor General's office can be proactive in providing information and data around where those efficiencies could be made to create that fund, how we could go forward in terms of transforming our economy. I think that was the question. Um, and I think that takes us to the end of the